Um, well, thank you everyone for uh, staying before the lunch. Uh, and I know I'm keeping you from lunch, so hopefully this is something you'll find interesting. Uh, my name is Hal Trent. I'm a senior consultant at Comtech Services. And what I'd like to kind of present to you guys is a wrapper that we developed for the SCORM plugin or for the SCORM output. Um, so is anybody in here using learning and training, the learning and training specialization right now? Okay, just a few of you. Okay, so one of the things that we're going through with learning and training is something that we went through, I guess, seven or eight years ago with traditional data content. And that was the style sheets that are currently available, they work well, but they're not quite up to par with the expectations of maybe a desktop publishing environment, or they're not up to par with what an LMS can offer. So this is just a little presentation about the SCORM wrapper that we've developed. And the first thing I'd like to kind of mention is kind of how did we get to uh, designing a wrapper? So right now, if you download the Open Toolkit, uh, there is a plugin out there that will take your content, your data content, and bring it into SCORM. So SCORM is a format that a learning management system can uptake, and then it can present a quiz environment. So it's basically a way to interact with data content, learning content. And the SCORM wrapper works quite well. Where it's limited is not in the, in the output itself, but in the LMS. So the learning management system is going to interpret that content differently between if you're using a C an LMS like Moodle or if you're using a more advanced LMS like Xylene. So depending on what your budget is, you may or may not have the budget to really create robust output using the out-of-the-box SCORM. So what we were thinking is, okay, our client really had some requirements that made the interaction with the quiz quite advanced. So how could we meet those needs? Well, the first thing we did is, well, what LMSs are out there? What wrappers could we place the output into to get it to generate the content we wanted? And those are available. There's something called SCORM Cloud. There are LMSs like Xylene that will take the current SCORM output, put it in a wrapper, and really give you that full interactive environment. But that wasn't, it, it still didn't meet the needs that we wanted. So we started thinking about, okay, what's already available? Well, there's web help out there in the open toolkit. You have Talk.js, and there are other proprietary tools that are out there that generate content like Oxygen Web Help um, that will allow you to interact with your content in that kind of left-hand navigation uh, way. So we thought, well, what if we build a wrapper on top of that that then interacts with the LMS? And the other benefit that we saw is we keep all of the out-of-the-box out functionality. So being able to use relationship tables, um, cross-references, any kind of dynamic linking that you would find within the data content. So what is the SCORM wrapper? And I'll have a demo here uh, very shortly. So the current demo that I'm going to show sits on top of Oxygen Web Help. So we've written a, a series of JavaScript files that basically allow us to interact with the content, to track the content, so as, an, as a user is going through the exercises, their activities are being tracked and stored in the LMS. When they interact with a quiz, all of that data is being captured and, and, and basically they're getting graded on the fly. So to do that, we just use the simple web help wrapper or the web help output that Oxygen provides out of the box and we basically added our own layer of JavaScript on top. So there's some local JavaScript that's basically building out the format of the pages, and then there's a JavaScript API that allows us to connect between the web help and the LMS. So with that being said, I'd like to demo this for you. Let me go ahead and just, first I'd like to show what the content looks like in an authoring environment. So the learning and training specialization, Similar to any kind of data content, it's a special a series of specialized data topics that are just designed for the learning and training organizations. So we'll see here that we have a, a giant course, an, uh, an entire course, and then within the course we have a series of lessons. Within each lesson, we have a series of really topics or learning assessments or, or I'm sorry, learning overviews that provide the information that the student is going to be quizzed on. And eventually we get down to the level of building the actual quizzes in the data framework. Now the promise of being able to build quizzes within the data framework was much like the promise when data first started that you could create all of your content in data. It's very true, but you have to have output to really prove the point to those who are making the decisions. And we were having a very difficult time saying, okay, here's a single select. I want you to list, your, list the question 
here are the different choices, here's the feedback if you get it wrong, is this right or wrong, all of that information can be stored in DITA. But when you transform it, there's a little bit of, uh, I guess there was um, something left to be desired. So what we decided is, what if we take these quizzes, add a little bit of JavaScript, create an interactive wrapper so that the end user could feel like they're taking a course, then have all of that information stored back into the CMS or into the LMS. So I just go ahead and show the demo. Okay, so what, what I've generated, and if I have time, I'll do this all live. When we generate the output from this wrapper, the first thing it creates is what you would see here. It looks like the Oxygen Web Help. So you're able to test out the course locally before you push it into the LMS. So in this screen we're showing, we're starting at the index file. And then behind the scenes, we also have a zip package that will then be uploaded into the LMS. Now, when I come to this page, you'll, you'll notice over here, as I work through this course, and again, this is sitting on Oxygen, but it could sit on top of really any web help, web help system, you'll see that it's very familiar where we have the next buttons. When I get to my course overview, I have my introductions, who is this for, the duration, the objectives, and you'll notice here, if I was to try to click on any of these additional links, I'm not able to continue through the course. Now what we're showing here is not anything um, unique or revolutionary, it's what you would expect in an LMS. An LMS is going to prevent you from moving on within the course until you've read the prior section or the previous section. So we just have JavaScript sitting on top that's recognizing, has this object been selected? I can group my content um, in ways I can use chunking. Um, I know we've already talked about chunking. So one of the requirements was I have lots of different data topics. I want to be able to chunk those so that my user doesn't have to continually click next. What I'm going to show here is that we can group a series of topics just like we would in a traditional web help using the traditional framework for data. So we have access to all of these tools that are out of the box. Now again, as I'm going through the course, it's tracking. So if I forget what um, I was supposed to learn maybe in PDC introduction, I can go back to that at any given time. So I can go back, I can relearn the content. Uh, in addition, learning and training, up oh, in a little style bug, huh, you never see those, do you? Um, learning and training content, it's often, uh, you often want video content. So within this wrapper, it takes the video content, you can launch a new page, launch the video, I'll go ahead and close that, um, but you can build video content into the wrapper. So I'm going to continue on going through, I'm a quick learner, and I get to the part where I have a quiz. So basically, and this can all be styled any way you'd like it to, but it's basically reading the data content, reading the data quizzes, and interpreting them as a match or as a multiple choice. Here's a true false, true false, and a multiple choice. So as a user, what I'd like to be able to do is try it out. So I'm just going to select a few of these, true, false, um, and we'll say true, or submit links. Okay, close. I got 75%. So again, all of this is what you would expect in an LMS. So I can go through. One of the things you'll see here is it's letting me know what I got correct and what I got incorrect. So again, interpreting the data content, being able to provide that end user with the feedback that he or she needs to complete the test. So I go through, I see I need to fix this question. Everything else looks good. I still can't move forward. I have a nice little X telling me, hey, you failed. I want to retry. So I'm going to go through and get it correct this time. So true, false, section links, submit my answers. I now have 100%. I've been given the green check mark, and I can continue to the next course. Now what's important here is that even though this is working locally, if I was to go into an LMS, and given time I won't show the whole uh, procedure, but I've basically uploaded this course into the LMS. Part of an LMS environment is the ability to take a quiz, quit the quiz, come back into the quiz, and continue on. So here you'll see that I've made it through the majority of my course, and I'm on this course list setup quiz. So what happened is when I came to this section, the LMS knows where I left off. All of that data is being stored in the LMS. 
So here, I know I've got to go quick, so I'm just going to retake this test, retry. Um, let's see if I can get through it quickly. I think this was the answer, true, true, false, true, submit the answers. I can continue to the next section. And the last thing I wanted to show is that those were some of the more simple layouts that you could do, but we also have the ability to do matching and sequence within the learning and training. So the idea here is at some point, once all of this code is completely fine-tuned, it, it and it is in production in one environment right now, but we'd like to fine-tune it, is to figure out a way that we can kind of I don't know if we're going to be able to donate it completely, but basically make it available as an option for SCORM output where you have a wrapper that's highly interactive and hopefully bridges the gap between learning and training and output. So that's all I had for the 10 minutes, so thank you very much.